Hey guys, Andy here from Mediocre Hobbies, bringing yet another painting tutorial. Uh, this time on something a little special. We have the new Black Templars in the house. So we managed to get our hands on the launch box. Um, super cool box of miniatures. Um, and I decided to do some painting tutorials for you guys, helping you to um, smash through paint black armor. I know black armor can be a little bit tricky to do. Um, I believe I found a really quick and simple way to, to bash out black armor that looks great super effective and takes absolutely no time at all so I'm really excited to show you guys that um you know when you do a tester for something and sometimes it doesn't work out and you're like oh i'm not really happy with that i'm not going to go ahead this is the complete opposite of that um i sat down to paint a black templar up i had an idea of how i was going to do it in my head by the time i was finished i was in love i absolutely loved how it turned out um, and i can't wait to show you guys um how i got there and the results of my my labor um, so stick around at the end of the video, um, tell me what you think of the video in the end in the comments and uh, yeah, enjoy. Okay guys, and this is how I started off the miniature. Um, I know it looks kind of surprising, but I actually gave it an all over coat of Chaos Black and then a light dusting of Lead Belcher, so a silver spray over the top of that. And this is going to be where we start building up black armor from this point. And it's going to be very simple. We're going to start with an all over coat on the armor of Black Templar. Now, a lot of people think you can't use contrast correctly to do power armor. Um, before this video, I was a little skeptical myself, but um, I think the results will speak for themselves. I think the trick is to actually overload your paint. As you can see, I put a monumental amount of contrast on that leg there. And that's kind of the point. It's kind of key to, to make sure that you get a lot of it on so you can move it around and get into all the right places before any part of that contrast dries. So you pick one part of the miniature at a time. So I'm working on this leg. And I'm going to get the contrast completely done on that leg before I go anywhere else. And as you can see, I'm now going back and look a little bit too much there, a little bit too much to pull it away, clean it off before I move on to the next bit. And if you do this and take your time, it does absolutely work. And here's the proof. Look how smooth the black on that leg is. That's one coat of contrast over it. No blotching, no none of that. If you just take your time and control your brush, you can get stellar results with it. From here, we're gonna give it another light dry brush of lead belcher. This is an all over on the armor again, light dry brush just to catch those edges and it will all make sense again um, closer to the end of the video. So we're not trying to go crazy. Think of it like, like an edge highlight, but you're doing it with a dry brush. You're trying to catch those areas that you would hit with a line highlight. Tips of the gorget, sharp edge of the helmet, those knee joints. Nothing too crazy. A lot of people think you can't dry brush power armor as well. That's another fallacy. The more modern a space marine is, the, uh, the sharper the details are, and the more they take to a dry brushing better. A lot of primaris kits are stellar for uh, dry brushing. Okay, so that's the stage we're gonna leave the armor at right now. Would you believe it or not, there's only one stage on the entire armor left. But that's uh, closer to the end, and we wanna get some more base coats on first. So we're gonna go on to all of the creamy bits. So the tabard um, and his shoulder pauldrons, and we're gonna give it a coat of Zandri dust. When I say one coat, it's more like kind of two thin coats. Um, obviously going over black and silver with a, a color like this, it doesn't give fantastic coverage. So two quick coats and you're golden. Now, unlike a lot of my other videos where we're, we focus on orcs and stuff like that, um, you do need to be careful painting space marines. I mean, they, they, they don't have overlap. They don't have messy lines between the uh, two different textures. It's very much uh, the black armor and the cloth are two very separate pieces. The tones don't match. They don't do any of that. So just be super careful not to hit anything you're not supposed to with the Zandri dust. Okay. 
And bam, there's all the bits that I gave a coat of Zandri dust to. Already starting to look like a Black Templar. Now a quick uh, Rhinox hide coat for the uh, leather belts um, that hold up his like scabbard and stuff like that. I actually thought that the, uh, you can see that little silver um, cup looking thing on his belt on the right hand side there. I didn't know what that was until later on. I went back and checked uh, the reference material to see what color that was supposed to be. And it turns out it's a little leather pouch. It holds a grenade or something. So um, I didn't do it brown in this particular stage, but I did go back later on and paint it brown. So you need to do it at this stage. Um, just add the Rhinox hide to that bit. Okay, so there's the brown belts done with their base coat. Now it's back to lead belcher, this time not a dry brush. Um, we are going to layer up the metallic parts on his um, pistol, his heavy bolt pistol, and then obviously the chains that hold the uh, pistol in place, the signature uh, piece of war gear for a Black Templar. So I want to get over them with another coat of silver just to brighten them back up again. Obviously these would be on two arms if it was uh, any other weapon other than a power fist, but the power fist isn't going to fall off, so they don't chain that. Now onto Retributor Armor Gold for the beautiful and proud wings on his chest. We get a nice base coat on them. But you want to take your time. Not only will this mess up the black armor, but it will scream if you make a mistake. So here's the Aquila, blacked out in gold, blacked out in gold, golded out in gold. Well, uh, corn red. And this is going to be for the gun casing. I also could not for the life of me find a reference picture for the Black Templar's Power Fist that comes in the set. Nowhere in the codex is a miniature holding it. So I have no idea what color the cross is supposed to be that is on the power fist um most of the, the crosses are black but the, the power fist itself is black so i didn't want to do that so we ended up going with the, the same red for all the weapon casings hopefully it'll tie in nicely Templars were renowned for having black and rare red crosses. I think it suits. <laughs> okay, so that is the miniature pretty much all base coated. I know we're a little bit on a higher stage on the base coat on the armor, but that is a okay. Now we're going over to Null and Oil. And we're going to give the model an all over wash of Null and Oil. And this is actually the final part of the black power armor. So if you think about that in your head, you spray the model with Chaos Black, spray the model with Lead Belcher Spray, Contrast Black over the top, dry brush it again with Lead Belcher just to catch those edges, and those edges will show through this wash, so it will look like you spent time edge highlighting, even though you didn't. And then the Null Oil will just darken it down again a little bit. And that's it. That is literally how I paint the black armor. So if you take away all the other bits and pieces on this miniature, you could paint the black on a power armored miniature in two, three minutes of brush time. And to me, that's just insane. There's a million videos out there showing you how to kind of edge highlight stage by stage by stage and power to the people who can sit down and do that. But I think trying to do that across an army is insane. I just think it takes too much time. So I would much rather kind of get the project finished to this standard than I would be to try get the other standard done and, and fail after a couple of miniatures. And this is what it looks like after it's dried. So focus on the armor here. What do you guys think of shiny black metallic power armor? I mean, I think it really works. I think that guy that's standing in front of you looks like a Templar. So now it's time to layer up all those other parts. We're not gonna to touch the armor again except for a little bit of dusting at the end when basing. 
so we have to layer up all the other parts so you shop your bone and we are going to go over all of those cream parts again taking our time and leaving the uh, much darker Zandri dust no oil shade in the, all the recesses and we're going to leave quite deep recesses on top arts and stuff so it's literally this raised bit here and the raised bit on the right but that entire crease in the middle is just going to let, get left dark like the sandry dust you kind of need two coats to get it nice and uh, crisp so here it is on the shoulder pad and here's the un um, layered shoulder pad I just wanted to show you that really quick the difference it can make and then there's the cream uh, done on the entire miniature both shoulder pads and his tabard back to lead belcher and this is to add a few little uh, highlights uh, layering detail um, to the metallic parts including the gold so i'm just gonna uh, basically highlight the tips of all the wings so there's two layers of wings there two layers of feathers there apologies and the tips of all the feathers um just gets a little bit of silver and it really makes it pop another line across the top so there's the half a wing done or half the wing not done you can see the difference what a tip of silver can do to a model. So, time to go over to the uh, red parts again. So, Evil Sun Scarlet. And we're going to layer up the cross and the gun casing on his heavy bolt pistol. literally the more I painted this miniature the more I fell in love I mostly got this box set to uh, show you guys some videos but this has uh, quickly turned over in my mind that it's going to be a full force a full army I was always a proud son of Dorne but uh, it was Imperial Fists up until now but Bolster by some Black Templar sounds good to me Take your time here, painting around a chain and uh, all those uh, metallic details in the gun can be a little bit difficult. But it's all about turning your miniature the right way around, never dragging your brush towards one of those details. You can see that I barely turn where my hand is, it's always the miniature that turns around. You want to keep your painting hand in a, in a really comfortable position gives you much better control time to layer up that brown belt and I'm using blood reaver flesh um, it's just a nice dark kind of like chocolatey brown um, and it works for layering up the leather uh, quite well this was a happy accident I actually broke the tabs on this paint doing this I'd never used it before but I was going through my browns trying to find something suitable to layer it with and this just popped out at me and I think it really worked. That old battered letter. The Templar storming his way through the Crusades would have. And I think it contrasts really well with the uh, cream and the black armor. You can see that vile bit now is the correct brown color. The Hollywood magic again, just filling that in for you. And this model is pretty much there it's time to add the base so I'm gonna go for a darker more Martian style so we're gonna start with a Martian iron crust and we're gonna apply this to the base you want to take your time with this this will obviously stain uh, that tabard it doesn't matter so much if you get a little bit of on the boots boots are stomping through it but that cream tabard this bit gave me anxiety pushing it under <laughs> obviously I've put too much on this side but I just, I just scoop it up Scrape it off the back bit and use it there. Flipping over to the smaller side of my basing tool to push it around the feet. I 
and there we have it. That is the Martian iron crust applied to the base. When that has dried, you're actually gonna use a contrast Griffhound orange to make it pop even more. You may see that my base already has some on it. That could be because I forgot to film and just immediately got excited and started applying it. But we won't get into that. As you can see, I've accidentally hit the tabard with the orange there, but I can wash that off now in a second with a bit of water on my brush. Once that is dry, it's time to start dry brushing. I'm gonna start with the riser rust, add a little bit more of that bright orange into it. And this is the bit I was talking about earlier on. I'm not being careful with this orange. In fact, I'm being the opposite of careful. I will on purpose hit all of the boots. I will do a little bit of light dry brushing on the, up as far as the knees um, on the miniature just like what it would be when these guys are stomping through the desert, fighting for ages, there will be dust kicked up and it will settle on their armor and get stuck in all the joints. And I think that just adds to the effect. So there's the rise of rust, a little bit of kindled flame. These are all dry paints, super quick and easy to use. Add a little bit more warmth to the base. You can see me dry brushing the armor a little bit. And then the final dry brush of Tyrant's Skull. I may have gone a tiny bit too heavy on this with the first stroke, but I just followed through. It should be quite a light dry brush at the end. But it's okay, it still worked. There's me hitting a little bit of the armor again with that bone. Probably a little bit on the fist and chest, tiny touches on the head. Just brings the model back down to earth. Taking the model out of the uh, painting handle now because we're going to do the rim of the base with Abaddon Black. Just want to take your time. I always do two coats of this. I'm not trying to get maximum coverage the first time. I'm just trying to get a, a base coat of black on because I don't want that chunky look, uh, gritty look around the rim of the base. I want it as smooth as possible. How those competition painters get that beautiful, smooth black finish on their ba base rims, I do not know. And here we have it. This is my finished speed painting Black Templar Space Marine. I am super pleased with how this turned out. I'll be more than happy to put a few Crusader squads of these on the tabletop um, and fight for Dorn. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you learned a few bits and pieces. If you did, think about supporting me. Subscribe to the channel. Drop the video a like. And if you have any questions about anything I did, please feel free to drop them in the comments below and I will get back to each and every one of you. Until the next video, guys. Bye.